If you've clicked on this video thinking laundries are easy to design, well then you're in for a rude shock. What's going on team? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today we're taking the ArcCAD ultimate template to the next level with the ultimate laundry design. So let's have a look at what's new by turning around to this screen and getting started with today's tutorial. Straight away, you can see that our laundry design is a small compact space. Looking at it in 3D, we have the cabinetry on the left-hand side, the washing machine area on the right-hand side, and a mudroom in the background. From a ground floor plan perspective, there's a lot going on, especially when we don't have any keynotes yet. That'll come later, so make sure you stay subscribed to see all of the keynotes and how I use them throughout ArcCAD. So like we mentioned on the left, we have all of our objects for our actual laundry section. On the right, we have all of our objects for our storage, and at the top, we have our mudroom. Because in theory for me, this down here is going to be the garage, so we walk through our laundry, have a little coat room, mud room section that we can take our boots off, take our coats off, and then walk into the main house. Or if we're just coming in for shopping, it's very close to drop the groceries off. And of course, on the left-hand side, I'm thinking we're gonna have a drying courtyard space that if you're not using the dryer, you can just simply take it outside. I'll jump in the middle here, team, to let you know that if you're looking to download this ArchiCAD Ultimate template, you can grab it in the description down below through Patreon. If you have any questions, Leave them in the comments and I'll reply to as many as I can. Just like in the kitchen design series where we had an entire page dedicated to all the objects in the kitchen, I've done the same thing for the laundry. So there is so many items to select from and choose from. So let's take our time to work through these. Starting up front, we have our washing machine dryer, pull out shelf and overhead cupboards. In our 3D, you'll see that exact arrangement here. The washing machine, the dryer, the pull out shelf and the overhead cupboards. The overhead cupboards are using the same object as our fridge so we can have the panels running to the ground. Next up of course we have our sink and a different variety of styles. So smaller, larger and a double sink and just like the kitchen we have a backsplash option as well. So we have the 800ml backsplash which provides us a hanging rail space or a 600ml backsplash which we don't have a hanging rail space. So you see in our 3D again we have that sink automatically modelled with that 800ml backsplash and you'll see the first variation of the clothes drying rack area. So this is just a concealed hanging rail so that if you have your laundry and you have anything on coat hooks, you can simply coat it, hook it up as you're ironing along. The second variation is this drawer pull out. It pulls out and there's a series of racks. So smaller items like your socks and underwear can be dried on that section if need be. Both those items are actually in our 800mm section. So if we scroll into the overheads, we'll have our 900mm two doors with a rail below, which is what I've got, and our 900mm with our pull-out clothes rack, which is also what I've got. But I have two sizes depending on what you need for your project. Next to our sink, of course, we just have two standard drawers, but they're not standard drawers at all. So if we come back into our laundry, you'll see they're 450mm pull-out laundry hampers. So when you're doing your washing and you're sorting, you can have your hampers directly next to your washing machines so you don't have to run around looking for all the clothes. Rotating to the opposite side of our wall, it seems relatively basic. We have a couple cabinets for storage of brooms, linen, etc. Then we also have these two unique cabinets at the end. And just like our laundry hampers, these are our laundry chutes. So what you'll see is we have two laundry hampers at the bottom, but we have two fixed panels above. So any laundry that comes from the top floor is automatically dropped down into your laundry chute. You can pull out a basket and away you go. Now in a home that has quite a large footprint, you may or may not need this many laundry hampers. However, I'm designing these spaces just to articulate all of the elements that we could potentially have. This isn't necessarily what I would have or how I would do it, but at least we have everything we need in one space. So those laundry chutes and linen stack cupboards are right here on the end of our laundry section. Before we move over to the mudroom, there's a couple of things that are critical. Obviously the tile selection on the floor is a little bit rough because the texture I found isn't exactly perfect. So we'll work on that a little bit later. However, what is critical 
is this small little tile insert at the very, very end near our washing machine. Not only do we have to think about the cabinetry, we also have to think about what's below. And below is of course our tiled floor waste. In the laundry section, I've also included a 1200 millimeter tile insert channel drain. So if you're looking to use a channel drain instead of a floor waste, you most certainly can. On the topic of tiles, I've created a new texture for the backsplash Kit Kat tiles, and I've also created a new wall type to be able to have our plasterboard, our plasterboard and our tile on top. So that way, when we're looking at it in the floor plan, we're truly getting the real thickness of that wall. Now, tiles vary significantly. Six mil, 20 mil, 10 mil, you name it. There's a different tile thickness depending on what you select. So I've opted for a standard 10 mil thick tile. And when you know your selection, you can go ahead and adjust the wall profile rather than anything else. Last but not least, we have our mudroom or bench seat section. So I've gone ahead and created shoe drawers that sit below our actual bench seat. I've created a brand new material for the bench seat itself. So fabric beige, which now comes under D textiles and, and also DT tiles for the floor tiles themselves. Then generically inserting four coat hooks along the back because well, most of the time people have a family and there is four people in a family, statistically speaking, on average, at least here in Australia. So four coat hooks just makes logical sense to me. And then of course, to finish it off, overhead cupboards, which are identical to that in the kitchen. They're simply overhead cupboards for storage purposes. Last but not least, to top off everything that we've talked about, because there is way more here than I bet you anticipated, is of course our LED strip lighting. So the LED strip lighting originally came from our kitchen design, but I've included it here under our cabinetry and here in our ceiling as well. I fine tuned the parameters of the LED lamp. So it produces more of a three and a half thousand Kelvin glow rather than your yellowy soft light that's default in Archicad. Anyway, that's all for me today, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and like always, I'll see you next week.